Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because I have a very special guest for you today. It is Miyoko Taylor. And Miyoko Taylor is a two-time best-selling author and transformational coach. He helps high-performing professionals and entrepreneurs live with purpose and lead with intention. And he also teaches them how to leave a legacy to those who matter the most. So I am honored to have you on the show, Miyoko. Why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Thank you very much for having me, Stacey. Stacey, I appreciate you having me on. Um, so basically, um, what I do is, you know, let me start with this. Most people don't realize that we've been lied to. Um, and it's this pursuit of happiness mindset and this hustle and grind culture that everybody's bought into. Yes. Um, so what I do is I take a lot of overstressed entrepreneurs, business professionals, um, influencers and who are struggling with this, who are trying to escape this hustle and grind culture. Yes. Um, and I show them pretty much a way to actually design their life in a way where they can have more purpose, freedom, and fulfillment. So that's what I do as a coach. Um, something that I'm very passionate about because it's something that I too was a part of. I fell, I don't want to say victim to, but I drank all the Kool-Aid yeah. with the whole hustle and grinding and, you know, the Gary V's and all these particular people. And, no disrespect to him at all because he's absolutely amazing. But what this hustle and grind mindset has done is it's given people a psychological um, uh, reason to say, you know what, I'm going to keep pursuing. I'm going to keep working. I'm not worried about getting any sleep. I'm not worried about taking care of myself. I'm just going to grind, grind, grind because that's the way to do it. And that's how I become successful. Um, and this is a huge problem. Yeah. Most people don't know entrepreneurs and business professionals are 60% most likely to develop anxiety issues, depression issues. And a lot of this is, is, is because due to this hustle and grind particular mindset. And I find that a lot of these particular people, including myself in times past, focus on this one area and they're successful in this particular area, but they lack fulfillment. They're yeah. not showing up in their relationships. They're not showing up as parents. They're not showing up for themselves you know, properly um, giving their, their body self-care and nourishment, whether it's mind, body, soul, spirit. So everything's out of whack. But this one particular thing is, you know, it's booming. So everybody's looking at them like they have it all, they're successful. But I have something uh, I always say is, what's the point of being a public success when you're a private failure? Right. And, and this is something that I constantly have to ask myself because we all have things that go on in our lives and we're balancing or... Um, trying to be in alignment with our uh, with our personal and professional lives. So this is just something that I'm very passionate about because, like I said, I to myself have, you know, fallen into that and drank the Kool-Aid. Now I'm just trying to educate everybody else on how to escape that particular mindset and then give them the tools that they actually need to balance out personal life, professional life, and passion and goals and all these particular things and do it in a way where it's fulfilling um, and they can genuinely be happy right? Uh, because this pursuit of happiness, if you look at pursuit of happiness, the first word pursuit literally means you have to chase something. So people are like, oh, pursuit of happiness. I constantly have to go after happiness and happiness is a state of being Some, and you're not going to be happy all the time. You're going to yeah. experience all different types of emotions. So this whole pursuit of happiness thing is such a trap because you continue to uh, achieve accolade, award after award, you're going over all this professional advancement and then nothing else goes the same. It's just, it's, you, you get that little high for a second and then you're off to the next goal, then to the next goal, then to the next goal. And then you never really get that overall sense of pure fulfillment. Right. Because what's really lacking is a lot of times your core values are not in alignment with your business or some of the things that you're doing. So it takes a plethora of different things to be in alignment with each other for that fulfillment and that happiness to actually set in. So we're chasing happiness and all these external things. Social media is a very, very big part of that driving force, yeah. you know, the internet. So this is what I truly believe that like, it's my personal mission to really educate and show other people that this is the reason why you're, you're struggling with anxiety and depression and things that I've definitely struggled with. Yeah. This is the reason why you're not feeling fulfilled. This is the reason why your health is not, is declining because you're focusing on all these external things and it's been programmed and, and you've been brainwashed to actually think this is the way to actually pursue life 
an advancement and it's not. You know, we live, uh, especially a- across the nation, we live in, a you know, many of the s- uh, states and many of the big cities, we live in a go-go, um, rush, rush society, and right. we don't know how to relax. We, you know, we're constantly on the go. We constantly need to accomplish things. We're constantly running from one activity to the next activity to the next meeting, you know, and, you know, most people, you know, they do, they, they, um, a lot of people um, get insomnia and they, dep- they have sleep deprivation where they can't go to sleep because they're constantly thinking of the next thing they need to do. And the next thing they in there. Yep. And, you know, and then they experience burnout and this actually could be fatal to your health as well. Like, Absolutely. For, you know, for instance, you know, I was with Ariana Huffington in New York and she was doing a segment with me on the Dr. Oz show and we were talking and she had just published her book on sleep deprivation. And she talked about her own story where she almost, you know, died from sleep deprivation because she was constantly working so hard that she never gave her body a rest. She never sleep properly. And her, she just one day collapsed and, you know, and she wrote a book on it to help others realize that, you know, if we constantly focus on, you know, our goals, like you mentioned, we could actually hurt ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Right, right. Um, you know, but when we're taught in an environment, especially when you're high achievers, you know, how do you break that realm? You know, when you are, when you, when you're taught in an environment in order to be a success, you have to do X, Y, and Z. You have to keep going, going, going. It's very hard to break a regimen. So what's the first step? And, you know, when are, is it when you start feeling some symptoms of, you know, depression or insomnia or stress mm-hmm. or burnout, you know, how, what do you do? You know, like what's step number one to get yourself back on track? You know, the, I, I say the first step is awareness. Like a lot of, a lot of oftentimes, you know, we're in these particular positions where we were lacking sleep and things like that. And, and one of the things we'll say is, you know, a, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you sleep while you're dead, you know, sleep later. I got something to, to accomplish. And if I don't accomplish it today, that means it's a connection to either my self-worth or my level of how successful the day was. So I think it's awareness to say, hey, you know what? Am I listening to my body? Um, what is my body trying to tell me? Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things with me is what is my body trying to tell me? What's going on? Why Why am I filled with all of this anxiety, this stress? Um, Why do I feel constantly exhausted? And then I had to trace it back to my thoughts. And then I started to think, well, why am I thinking this? And what a lot of people don't understand why about anxiety, most of the time anxiety is we fear something that either is not going to happen or we don't know the, uh, it's the unknown. So I've learned that in the presence of fear, there is an extreme lack of preparation. Yes. So the better, the more prepared you are, the more that fear kind of uh, diminishes. So I would say the first step is awareness. I say that about anything. You have to get to the point where you actually own where you are. You know, like Ariana Huffington, sleep deprivation. I It took, you know, a particular situation for her to actually, um, for actually, hold on just a second. Mm-hmm. We are going to have to do another take. No, that's fine. I'll cut that out. All right. Um, So just like you were saying with Ariana Huffington, it took her actually falling out to realize that sleep deprivation was a big thing for her. But I'm sure she was on the go. She was on the go. But that gave her a certain level of awareness to say, hey, you know what? Now I've got to focus on this. So whenever I get to this point again, because it's definitely going to happen to where you start to feel your body again, now she can say, hey, you know what? I need to slow down. Right. So that awareness is very, very important because we, like you said, we go, 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 and go. And we ignore all these different particular signs in our minds and our bodies and our environments until something happens. Right. So I think awareness is definitely the first step. And then from awareness, you could actually go into, all right, so what are some of the next stages or the tools that I actually need to help me in this particular area? Now, a lot of people, you know, don't understand that our intuition, our, our, our heart, our, um, our sixth sense, you know, basically talks to us. Our body tells us what we need. It it gives us, you know, it gives us hints, it gives us guidance, it gives us direction. Now, for someone who is oblivious to this, you know, what would you suggest that people, how do they start learning about 
you know, being more in contact with what their body is trying to tell them, connecting with their inner self, connecting with their intuition, their, their mind, their heart, you know, because those things all tie into one. And basically our, we are always get our getting directions from our body. It's just, it's just that we don't always choose to follow what our body right. tells us right. or what our mind tells us. So do you suggest something like meditation or do you suggest Absolutely. other things, you know, that might help somebody? I always tell my clients, you have to, when I tell them what is their why, it's always something external, like my, my, my family, my kids, you know, that particular thing. But then I asked them, I said, how much time, how much time per day, what, where's that space between you and just everything else? Yeah. Like clear that whatever it's 30 minutes, whether it's an hour, you need that time for creativity, for relaxation, just to be. Not even to think about work, to think about spouse, think about kids, none of that stuff. You're just in a state of being. Right. And I really think in that, it could be meditation, it could be prayer, it could be yoga, it could be all types of different things, but that space is for you. That is a sacred place mm -hmm. for you and only you. And once you actually get in that particular space, there's a lot of clarity you can actually get about life, about purpose about your body, all those different things, but you have to take the time to create that space for yourself. So I would say you have to create that sacred space for yourself, whether it's 30 minutes, whether it's an hour, and really just be, don't worry about it, anything. And right. it's easier said than done. If you can't do 30 minutes, try five. And then from five, try 10 and just escalate from there. But you have to have a space to yourself. Like for example, when we're finished this, actually this podcast show, when we're done this, I'm actually going to take some time <laughs> and mm -hmm. have my own little space. Sometimes I do it in the the uh, the evening. Sometimes I do it, you know, in the afternoon. It just depends. But you've got to take that time for yourself. It's super, yeah. super important. I think, you know, too, is when you do take some time, some me time to renew yourself, you also are able to clear your mind and focus better. And when you're Absolutely. focused better, you can actually make better choices for yourself and for others as well. How do you Absolutely. feel about that? You know, it's it's... I feel the same way. And most people say they use terms like, you know, center, ground yourself, those particular things. So, you know, that's exactly what that is. You have to, you have to do that. Right. So much happens in a day, especially as a parent, as a spouse, as a business owner, um, professional, so many different things happen in the day. And sometimes some of those things can knock you off balance. So yeah. to be able to have that space to reground yourself and recenter is so, so important. And I know a lot of people say, I don't have the time, but we waste so much time doing so many different things. If you really keep track of your time, you'll say, oh my God, I got all this. I had all this time today. So yeah, prioritizing you, mind, body, soul, and spirit mm -hmm. is where it starts. You have to prioritize yourself. So like I said, I don't expect people to do 30 minutes or an hour right away, but let's say five or 10 minutes. Everybody right. has that. Yeah. Five or 10 minutes to just be. So just breathe, you know, take everything in. Right. Don't think about work. Don't think about anything like that. Just to just stand still yes. and just do something to where you're actually channeling in your inner energy. I think that is so important. It is very important. I agree with you. Now, I know many people, you know, that don't know how to prioritize, you know, entrepreneurs, a lot of times they have, you know, many of them who are successful have assistants and they prioritize for them. Right. So if you have an, you, an entrepreneur, you have a su successful business person and you're trying to teach them how to transform themselves and trying to teach them how to live a healthier life and, mm -hmm. and get to a better point in their life, um, you know. How do you teach them to prioritize when they really, most of them have other people prioritizing for themselves. A lot of people don't know how to prioritize. So what are some tips that you suggest to learn, you know, how to prioritize your, your life? High impact activities. We focus a lot on very minute things that take up the majority of our time. Minute things that take up the majority of our time. Yes. So high impact activities. You have a particular goal. You know what you want to accomplish. What is the one activity for that day that would have the most impact? Yes. That activity gets done. That action gets taken before anything else. Right. So if that activity is not done, nothing else gets accomplished. Okay. So that's how that works. I think that's, that's really good. You know, um, 
Now, a lot of times when people come to you, like, what are their, uh, what are uh, like some common things that they need help with that you noticed? Um, a lot of people come to me, they're already successful. Like they, they seem like they have it made. <laughs> so a lot of people come to you to, yes. um, you know, to try to figure out, you know, how to, um, how to be, have a more meaningful life. And, right. you know, we just discussed about, you know, me time and we discussed about, you know, prioritizing our time, you know, what other things do you feel are very important for people to incorporate in their lives if they want to live a fulfilling life? Cause that's the goal, you know, you can right. be successful, but you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're happy within yourself. I'm glad you said that because my next statement was going to be success and fulfillment are two different things. Yes. Most people don't realize that. Yes. Most people think success, happy, success, fulfillment. I can be successful in business, but I can be the biggest, 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 biggest idiot when it comes to being a spouse. Yes. Or I can be a horrible parent. Right. Completely neglect my children. Right. So that doesn't mean success doesn't mean happy or completely fulfilled. So right. I teach success and fulfillment are very two different things. So what I find a lot is some people that are successful in an area, very successful, but they have no, they've lost their sense of purpose. Yes. I think that's very, very big. A lot of people are in professions and doing particular things because somebody said it was good. They were good at it. It was a thing to make money. It was a thing to do. But as you get older and you really start to reflect on your life, it's just like, man, what am I doing to make the most impact? So it's the purpose yeah. aspect for a lot of people. Um, especially if they're already financially, you know, making money and they're already successful. It's, it's the purpose fact and it's the anxiety. It's, it's, they're on this hamster wheel, you know, it goes yeah. back to that hustle and grind mindset. Like you're only as, you're worth only as much as your last accolade. Right. So a lot of people are chasing that external accomplishment to get validation for their own self-worth and things like that. So there's some mindset. And some internal things that I actually experience well too with my uh, with my clients as well. But purpose is a very very big one, very big one. And how do you help people find what their true purpose is? How you know what ways do you help them once you know once they've reached that level of success or once they you know have accomplished the things they're doing and they're they're getting that anxiety and they're not feeling fulfilled and they don't know what their purpose is. How do you get them off that wheel and how do you get them to really understand who they are as a person and how they need to find purpose in their life? Well, the first thing is, I would say, what is a significant chapter in your life? How did it shape you? How did it change you? And, you know, how does that play into your life right now? So I do an exercise where they actually write down their three biggest chapters turning points and my my one of my coaches actually taught me this this very same thing it's pretty awesome so when you put down these three significant chapters of your life and then they start talking about it and they start lighting up and it's just like yeah you know i've always wanted to do this do that and that because of that and it's just like ah okay so now you ask questions all right so why haven't you done that yet what's right. the first step and then it's just like oh my god this is something that i literally want to do so it kind of lights them up so um, and, a, and, and it doesn't have to be like their purpose doesn't have to be something that they're monetizing. Like it doesn't have to be their main source of income. Right. Oftentimes they still stay in their professions, but now they have this as a passion project on the side. Right. But it gives them that level of fulfillment because they're actually operating in it. So I want to kind of make that particularly clear because a lot of people teach purpose and it's got to be the monetization method for you. And it doesn't. It right. doesn't. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. So it's, it's finding those significant moments in your life. That's what, that's what kind of connects you to your passion and your purpose, to be honest. I feel a lot of times, you know, you could have all the money in the world, but it's not going to bring you happiness, you know, not at all. What really brings you happiness is, is loving yourself. And, Absolutely. You know, and, you know, I think once you love who you are as a person, you know, that's when the self-esteem boosts. That's when the self-fulfillment comes. That's mm -hmm. when, you know, your empowerment, you know, your true empowerment comes, that releasing that power within you and really understanding that you really love that person that you've become. You're not that, you know, person on the outside trying to be someone, you know, that society wants you to be, what your bosses want you to be, what your clients want you to be. Right. Actually, you know, you could release 
And once you accept yourself and love yourself, you could become that person, that person that you were describing that has that purpose and has that, you know, is doing something on the side to like, you know, uh, to, to make themselves feel, you know, fulfilled in that sense. Right. And it starts, it starts with you. It starts with you. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. And I mean, you, you look at social media, you see it all over the place. It's just like the cars and the houses and beautiful women and, you know, the suits and this lavish lifestyle. And it's just like, this is going to make you happy. And oftentimes people have that and they're the most miserable people in the world. And it's just like, because if you're, if your inner world, if the inside of you is completely in disarray, yeah, it doesn't matter what's happening on the outside. And this is why you see a lot of entertainers, they commit suicide, a lot of athletes, you know, a lot of mental health things. Because when you pursue a life that's not in alignment with your core values or purpose or something that's really attached to something that fulfills you, you are always going to have that void. How do you find those core values? How do you, how do you realize when, you know, when someone comes to you, how do they fi- figure out who they are as a person? How do they figure out who, what their core values are and you really get a better understanding who they are as a person because they've lived that life outside in the, in the business world, you know, and for so long, you know, or the media world, or the TV mm-hmm. entertainment world, wherever they're doing. And sometimes they, they don't realize they've, they played a, a world of lies, you know, to, you know, a facade because that's right. what society expects out of them, you know, but then sometimes people, you know, put that facade on for so long that they lose, they, they don't really realize who they are anymore, who, who right. that person is. And I think that's right. where that anxiety comes in, that depression comes in yes. because, yes. you know, they're wondering who am I, you know, because they've lived this make-believe life that people expect from them. And, you know, the thing about it is it, it's un, it's up until they get to that point. Who am I? That awareness, it goes back to that. Once they start doing that, then they can peel that onion back because most of the times they're not even wondering about who they are. Yeah. They attach what they do mm-hmm. to who they are. Right. So that's why you have a lot of people very successful in the business world. Um, they're known for that particular aspect of who they are. But that's not really who they are. Okay. Now I hear that you come out with two best-selling books. Can you tell me about each book and what the purpose of each book was? So find your amazing five steps to transforming your life. That was kind of my first introduction into um, turning adversity into some type of triumph, some type of um, message, and actually, you know, getting into my purpose. So I basically walk people down. Awareness is in there. I know I talk about that a lot. So. Basically, the five steps you can actually do, regardless of what situation that you're in, um, here are the five stages that you have to get through to actually figure out what your purpose is and actually how to move forward with your life, whatever that means to you. Um, and so the the second one uh, was six keys to more impact, income, and influence. Um, that was more so personal development, but it had some, some business into it mm-hmm. um, in the personal branding and entrepreneurship aspect. So it combined personal development with personal branding, mm-hmm. um, just kind of uh, your messaging, how to convey your message and your story to your audience. Um, and, and that was pretty much what that book was based on. Can you give us a brief um, description of those five steps of transformation? Like what do you have to do to actually go through the, through tran- the transformation process to get to that person that you want that fulfillment? Sure. So the first one, you know, was self-awareness. Like I said before, like if you're not mm-hmm. at the place where you're owning it and you're self-aware, then, you know, it's kind of like beating a dead horse. It's just not going to happen. Right. So once you get self-aware, we go into the mindset. We talk about the belief system, how thoughts um, and beliefs lead to behaviors and actions and habits, which leads to results. Right. Um, then we pretty much go into, you know, finding finding your amazing, which is what I call it, which is your zone of genius, that particular thing that is easy to you and extraordinary to everyone else. Right. Then we go into the habit aspect of it. How are you developing good habits? Um, and then the last part is actually goal setting. Right. Um, how are you setting particular goals? Are they actual goals that you want to accomplish or they just sound good? You know, so mm-hmm. that's pretty much the five steps that... Um, are actually in the book. It's not a long read, but it's, it's short and it's got some exercising and some implementation in there as well. 
Now, when you do goal setting, do you like to focus on short-term goals and long-term goals? Do you like people to actually set a journal where they start writing their short-term goals and long-term goals? Like, what do you suggest for that? It's interesting because it's interesting because I'm actually filling out something that has one-year goals, three-year goals, five-year goals. I usually don't do that, but having a daughter actually completely changed my perspective on goal setting. So. Not only am I doing goals for me, I'm doing goals on what I should expect, like for myself when it comes to my daughter. So um, I think having a again, like I said, because I'm somebody that has, has struggled with anxiety. I understand what that's like. Yes. The more that I am prepared, mm-hmm. the less the anxiety is. So for a lot of people who are very successful, anxiety is a very big thing. Depression is a very big thing. Yes. Um, so the more you can prepare, the more you can plan. Don't go crazy. Don't have like a million and one goals, but set a very, very big goal for maybe one year, three or five years. And then 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 just do very, very high income activities or not income, high impact activities towards those particular goals. So for me, the more prepared that I am, the less the anxiety is and the more clearly I can see what I can do, what I need to do day in and day out. Do you have any tips for people that are, you know, because what anxiety basically leads to depression. Do you have any tips for people when they're suffering from anxiety and they're starting to fall into that hole and they can feel the depression starting to set in? Do you have suggestions to help those people before they actually get into severe depression or to get them out of that minor depression? Right. So, so the quite I would, I would ask them a question. What are you worried about? Um, Why are you worried about it? And what can you do about it now? What are you worried about? Why are you worried about it? Mm -hmm. And what you can do about it? What can you do about it now? And oftentimes, those particular questions are like, okay, what am I worried about? Boom, this, it becomes a thing. Why am I worried about it? I'm worried about it because if I don't do this, I'll do that. What can you do about it now? Well, you know what? If I actually plan this, then that's done. Then I don't have to worry about it. So right. it's that particular thing has been a game changer, not only just for myself, but for other people as well. What is it? Why am I worried about it? And what can I do about it now? That's very good. And now, so what do you, what do you, what do you suggest to the audience for people? Because some of these transformation um, steps and the stages that you were talking about could actually apply, not just to business people could apply to regular people too. Don't you think? Right. Absolutely. This is, that particular um, sequence can apply to any situation that you are going through in your life. What is it? What, why am I going through it? And what can I do about it now? That yeah. you can apply that to business. You can apply that to life. It's one of those universal um, set of pa- very powerful questions, right. but it actually gets you to take action. It identifies what it is. Right. And it gives you a way to actually go from where you are now to where you really want to be, whatever that situation is. I like that. That sounds really great. Now, where can people find your books? So they can find my books on Amazon. Uh, Mm -hmm. They're on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, um, all the particular, you know, the basic book sites um, and things like that. Um, If they want to actually get in touch with me, Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Instagram, Miyoko Taylor. Everything is Miyoko Taylor, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. (laughs) Um, Facebook, um, all those particular outlets. That's great. You know, I, it was a pleasure talking to you. Now, do you do coaching also? You, you, you're yes. a coach yourself, right? Yeah. Yes. So where can people, you know, um, get in touch with you or maybe schedule a coaching session with you? So I have a Calendly link that I can actually provide to you. Um, uh, they can get actually join in for a 15 minute connection call. They can actually, I can actually get to know them kind of hone in on their situation. Um, if it's something, if I feel like it's something I can help them with and, you know, uh, we strategize, I will put them on a 45 minute strategy call at that point, kind of help them through their situation. And um, if we feel like it's both a good fit um, and it makes sense to actually discuss possibly working together, then we take from that step. So it's a three step process. Great. So I'll, what I'll do is I will post your your uh, Candly um, link so people can contact you. And they, I, I assume they could also message you through Instagram yeah, and Facebook absolutely. and stuff like yep. that if they're um, interested. Very approachable. Time. Very approachable. Yep. Just give me a holler. And do you do Zoom as well? You do both Zoom yes. and in person? Yes. All right. Terrific. 
Well, you know, thank you so much, Miyoko. It's been a pleasure having you on here. It, and... The pleasure is all mine to meet a fellow Jerseyan. <laughs> 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 I might run into you at the mall. <laughs> you might run into me at the mall. Definitely. <laughs> Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. And you, you've you really given us some valuable pointers. And I, I think, you know, what you had to say is going to help a lot of people. And I think your books, you know, will definitely, you know, benefit others because, you know, I think people really need to learn how to transform themselves. Because when you get stuck in a cert certain situation, it becomes a regiment, your daily regiment. And it's hard sometimes to kick those regiments and get out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Stacey. I really enjoy myself and we'll be in touch for sure. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome.